In this video, I'm gonna show you how I edited one of my landscape photos from this to this in Lightroom in my web browser. That's right, I was able to use Lightroom's ridiculously powerful editing tools to edit a raw file just by launching Google Chrome, which is my default web browser. Now, before I show you how awesome this is, because it's awesome, you may be wondering why you'd even wanna use Lightroom in a web browser when there is already a powerful desktop app and there are mobile apps that are also very powerful. And you're right, Lightroom desktop and mobile are amazing, but here's the thing. I'm seeing more and more powerful desktop grade apps, including Photoshop, make a home in your web browser tab and I am all for it. For starters, there's still a ton of people around the world who may not have computers powerful enough to reliably run these desktop apps, but they can definitely run a web browser. Just think about all of the Chromebooks out there. Also, it's reassuring to know that I can access my entire photo library and most of Lightroom's editing tools in a pinch from any computer with an internet connection and a web browser. Listen, at the end of the day, I'm all for adopting an ecosystem that gives me more flexibility in terms of how I use it rather than less. With that said though, while Lightroom Web is very robust, it's not a one-to-one -one clone of Lightroom Desktop. Still, I love that I can apply a full editing treatment to my raw files right inside of a browser tab. So let me show you what I mean. Okay, so here we are in Lightroom Web, and it would be understandable if you thought we were in Lightroom Desktop. In fact, I've got Lightroom Desktop open right here, same folder. And the thing, again, that I love is I have access to every single photo that I've synced to the cloud, which is my entire library, and it's right here in a web browser. Now, there are two ways that you can access Lightroom Web. The first is just typing in lightroom.adobe.com and log in with your Adobe ID and you'll have access to Lightroom over here. The other way is if you have Lightroom uh, desktop open, if you click on the little cloud icon here, you'll see right here, there is a link for a Lightroom web. So you can just click on this and it'll bring you there as well. All right, so what I wanna do is work on this photo and this is already edited and I'm not gonna go into an extensive workflow of how I edited this photo. I'll show you some of the things that I do just to illustrate how powerful this web-based Lightroom is. But really quickly, if you do wanna learn my entire landscape photo editing workflow, I have a brand new course called Lightroom Landscapes. I'll drop a link in the description below. All right, let's get back. Now, one of the things that I love most about working with the entire Lightroom cloud-based ecosystem, including the web, is that I have access to a lot of things that get synced across. So one of them is versions. Versions is such a powerful function and I have an entire video on how that works, so check that out. But what I'm gonna do here is click on the original state, the original version of this photo, so we can start over and you can kind of see this is what I did all in the web browser. And so what I wanna do is illustrate to you some of the tools that I used and just how awesome it is. So I'm gonna go ahead here to the edit panel over here. So the first thing that I wanna do generally is apply lens correction. So I generally do, this is pretty much the first thing that I do for my photos. I am working with a raw file, which is awesome. Uh, I have access to it here, which is why I can also, after that, if I want to, use one of my built-in camera white balances or get a custom white balance. Again, this is a raw file, so I'm gonna go here and I'm just gonna click on a gray area just to get a custom white balance here. Now, one of the key differences that I found with uh, working in Lightroom Web versus the desktop app, for example, is with the desktop app, when you hover over things like these presets for white balance or presets and profiles, you'll get a live preview. But with the web browser, you have to click on it to get the preview. So I just wanted to give you a heads up there. All right, the next thing I'm gonna do is just, typically what I'll do is adjust tone. After I get my white balance and my lens correction, I'm just gonna open things up just a bit here. Let's open up the shadows and open up the black point just a bit, just so we can get a nice even exposure. Now what I wanna do is add a little bit of a creative look and for that, I'm gonna to go to the profile browser. One of the best parts again about working with a cloud-based ecosystem is that in the profile browser, you can see I have all of the profile packs that I've imported. Same thing goes with the preset browser. If you go to the yours tab, any presets that you've imported will be available in the web as well. It's just so cool. So what I'm gonna do, like I said, is go to the profile browser. I'm gonna go to my Waterfall Wonders profile pack and I'm gonna apply WW05, just cause I know I really like the way this looks. And you have a strength slider here. 
So I'm going to apply. I like, I really do like the way the effect this applies to the photo. So that's good right there. So let's go back. Now, a landscape edit of mine would not be complete without a bit of an S curve. We have our full point curve here, which is amazing. So I'm going to go ahead here and apply my beloved S curve. Oh man, I, I, I don't know what it is about S curves, but to me, it applies just the right amount of contrast to a photo. I can also take the black point and introduce some gray if I want to give it a little bit more of a vintagey look. That's awesome. And then the other thing that I want to do is bring out more of the moss, the, just the presence of it. And this boggles my mind. So point color was introduced in Lightroom in October of last year at the annual Adobe Max conference. It's one of the uh, tentpole features that were added. The, probably the biggest one was the local browse, which I have a video on as well. And I have a video on how the point color tool works. But the fact that I can do it in a web browser is amazing. So let me show you how that works. I'm gonna go ahead and click on this dropper here. And then I'm gonna click on a color that I wanna swatch. So right here, there's the swatch that was created. Generally, the way that I work with point color is I'll enable this visualize range. What that'll do is it'll render the entire image grayscale except for this specific hue range that I have selected. And I can refine this. So I can say like, if I wanna drag this over and have less of this hue or this specific area of the hue, I can do that. I can say only give me the most saturated parts of that color. And I can also say, just give me the brightest parts of that color. So don't select the darker values of this color. And you can see now that we have a very targeted selection. So now I'm gonna disable the visualize range so we see the full color image. And now I can go ahead here, I can add saturation, and I can also make it even brighter. And if I wanted to, I can also adjust the hue as well. But I generally wanna keep that as it is, just because usually if I'm making adjustments to these three range sections here, then I, I generally leave the hue shift alone. Another thing that I'm gonna do is use color grading and I'm gonna apply just a very slight kind of cooler tone to the shadow area, just because I think that accentuates the overall look of this photo. All right, now I wanna get rid of some distractions and here's, this is something that's kind of interesting. I'm gonna show this to you right now. And it's interesting because I believe it's only available in Lightroom web so far. So if anything, it's kind of like a sneak peek. So check this out. If we go to the healing tools over here, which is this little Band-Aid icon, notice this early access section. It might be collapsed over here, so you'll wanna expand it, but it says, remove distractions and imperfections from your photos with significantly improved results thanks to advancements in AI and machine learning. Try the new content aware remove, which is early access in Lightroom on the web and send us feedback. So this is cool, the fact that we have this. Again, content aware remove, early access. So generally what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna look around here. I'm actually gonna turn off my mouse cursor overlay just cause it's easier to see the healing brush and I'm gonna make a few adjustments. So I'm gonna remove that over there. I'm also gonna disable the show overlay so we can see the results. Now, like with the remove brush, when you make a selection, if you're not happy with it, there's a refresh button. So I'm gonna click on this over here and it's gonna try again until I get something like that, that looks good. Then I'm gonna go ahead and start removing other things like this branch over here. It does a really good job and just some other kind of pieces that I don't want that are a bit of a distraction. Same thing here, I'll just kind of get rid of that little bright area. And we're looking pretty good here. All right, now let me turn back the cursor overlay so you can see where my mouse is. And the last few things that I generally do in my editing workflow is to adjust the presence and kind of draw the eye where I want it to go. So typically what I'll do is I'll go to the effects panel over here and I'll apply a little bit of clarity and I'm just paying attention to look at the image here to make sure I don't over sharpen it. And I'll also apply a little bit of dehaze because I think it does a great job whenever there's water or sky in a scene. And then the last thing I'll do is apply texture. Now, this is where things get super cool. Again, we are in a web browser. I wanna draw focus pretty much to the foreground here and I want the background to be a little bit out of focus. Well, one of the other tools that was introduced with Lightroom in October at their Adobe Max conference was Lens Blur. Now it's still early access as you can see over here. 
it's still kind of a beta tool, but it works really well. So I'm gonna click here to apply it. And you can see that it's already starting to render the background out of focus. Now, first thing I'll do is adjust that strength, just how blurry it is, because that is a bit too strong. I don't want it to be like that blurry. I just want it to be slightly blurry. But what I also want to do is I want to adjust the presence or where that blur is applied. Right now, based on this focal range chart, the focus is being applied to the foreground. And you can see here that as you get outside of this bumper, this background area is out of focus. So what I want to do is extend that range to make more of the background in focus. And so that's looking really good. And in fact, I'm also going to make the blur amount a little bit stronger. Now, the other thing that I want to do is bring out the presence of the flowing water. To do that, I'm going to go to the masking tools and you can bet that we have these powerful masking tools. Now, I will say that there are some differences here. There, for example, is no uh, masking brush. So you can't use the adjustment brush here to make selections. You can see under coming soon that brushing is going to be coming. Uh, there's also no object selection, but this is what we have here. And it's okay because I actually just wanted to use the radial gradient. And just like you would on the desktop, I'm going to go ahead here and I'm going to make a radial selection. I'll move it here. I'll kind of adjust the angle of it. Now with the selection made, you can see we have a feather slider here. So here, if we want a really hard edge, we can do that. But I actually prefer having a really soft edge here. And what I'm gonna do is just make this a little narrower, just so we're really focused on the water. And then I'm gonna take the highlights. I'm gonna increase those highlights a little bit. I'm also gonna increase the exposure just a tiny bit here. And I'm gonna go to clarity and add even more clarity just to that section. And to wrap things up, let's just go back to the editing tools here. We'll go to detail. Let's apply some sharpening. It has a default value already. Um, one of the things that we don't currently have, I don't know if it's even possible, is with desktop and mobile, there is kind of a hidden way to access a grayscale mask for the sharpening amount, as well as a black and white mask view for the masking slider, but we can't do that here in the web. Still, you do have your sharpening tools here. And if we close out of here to commit the edits, and then go over to Lightroom, you can see all of the edits that I made to this photo are already available on the desktop as well as on mobile devices. And if I go back to Lightroom in the web and open that same image up, we do have the ability to export it out as JPEG or the original raw file. Now, as you saw, I really only scratched the surface of all of the editing capabilities that Lightroom offers for landscape photographers. And again, like I mentioned before, I do have a new course called Lightroom Landscapes, which goes way deep into all the different ways that you can use Lightroom and Photoshop to edit your landscape photos. I hope you check it out. The link's in the description below. I've also got this playlist here with even more Lightroom desktop and mobile videos, so check those out. And as always, if this video was enjoyable, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to click the subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified of all future videos. Thanks a lot, everyone.